Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition is the most critically acclaimed, the most successful, the most awe-inspiring of all tabletop role-playing game systems ever made of all time. But something I want to consider is, how much of that game system do we actually use to get the games that we want? How much is taken out of that game to make it the best system today? Let's talk about that. First things first, real quick and easy one here is survival mechanics. Raise your hand, class, if you've ever used actual hardcore survival mechanics listed there, right there in the player's handbook. Does your character need to worry about eating? Do they need to worry about drinking? Do they need to worry about where they're sleeping? I'm more than willing to bet that if you played in a thousand games, you would probably only have to deal with those itty bitty annoyances maybe once or twice. But also very importantly is if, even if there was the need, the DM said, hey, you have to eat or drink or whatever, that can be solved with incredibly low level spells. Same thing could be said for diseases. Diseases could be very impeding upon characters, but guess what? If that is even in the game in the first place, once again, that can be easily removed with a simple remove spell. Simple as that. I genuinely hear very few people running a game of 5th edition using survival mechanics of that degree, even though they are right there presently in the book, and that's how you're supposed to be running it, rules as written. Another very big important aspect of 5th edition is it was designed around the idea that you were getting into a lot of encounters in a day, and that is to balance out all of the class features as well as utilize that hit dice system. You're supposed to get into a lot of encounters because the spellcasters start off really strong in the day with all their spells, but eventually over time their spell slots wane. Whereas the fighter, for example, the fighter keeps on chugging along strong the whole day. The ever so classic inherent design of you're supposed to get into six to eight encounters in a day to make your resources drain over time and allow for all the classes to shine is there in writing. And yeah, once again, how many games have you actually played of 5th edition where you are getting into 6 to 8 encounters in a day? I feel like it's very unlikely. I know a lot of people have ran those adventuring times once or twice, but not consistently. I doubt consistently because, let's be honest here, if you actually did run a lot of encounters in a single adventuring day, then... What ends up happening is you go through all this rigmarole, all this time consumed, and then you take a long rest, and even if you were on desk door yesterday, it's like nothing happened the next day. This is a very important one, because if you're only running one encounter in a day, then some classes do not get to shine, whereas the other ones do, because a lot of classes get to really shine when there is no resource drain at all. You know, once again, looking at the wizard versus the fighter, the wizard gets to shoot off their fireballs and do a bunch of damage. Then the fighter, unfortunately, just gets to swing a few times, and that's the end of story. Another really big push I see in a lot of games that we remove from the system is lower levels. I see a lot of people refusing to play games that start off at the low, pitiful levels of one or two. In fact, I've seen a lot of people, and I've actually ran four people, that demand that the game starts at level five. I'm very much so a believer that the four tiers of D&D are four different game systems, essentially. Levels 1 through 4 play out a lot differently than 5 through 10. And then consequently, levels 5 through 10 play a lot differently than 11 to 16. They are very different games, and I see a lot of people want to skip over that tier 1. Now... I suspect one of the major reasons for that is because players that have a character in mind, they really want that third level because that, you know, subclass really ties in with their original character. I imagine that to be the case, but I know that there's a lot of people who also don't like levels one and two because, oh, I don't have enough features. Oh, my HP is too low. Oh, da da da, this and that. But my question to you all is, at what point, like let's say we were to create a new game, right, of, of uh, the new 6th edition, and you got your subclass right there at level 1, would that trend still continue? Would it be the case where after a bit of time, then eventually people still want to move on to, oh, I don't want to start off at level 1 even though I've got all these features, I want to start off at levels 3 or 4 or 5 because that's when I get even more features. I'm wondering how much of that feature creep, that player's desire, how much is that ingrained in the game? 
I genuinely don't know. So all these things I've listed are base features of the game that are intended to be there. And yet a lot of people strip away the game to get the game that they want. What that's telling me is that this game's got a lot going on for it, but people only want that core thing. And that makes me question, at what point are we playing the different game? At what point are we playing a different game to get to the game that we want? So we've already established a lot of people do not want a game where you're having to deal with survival. A lot of people do not want to play a game where you're getting into a bunch of encounters in a day. A lot of people do not want to play a game where they start off weak and losery, right? And I'm curious how that's going to affect the market later on. Are we going to truly see the next game system just simply eschew away the survival mechanics? Are we going to see all of the classes change so that everyone gets to shine throughout that one or two encounters in a day that people run? Are we going to see the game where you start off already awesome at level one? You know, I'm genuinely curious. Because if I was working at Wizards of the Coast, and I see that no one's using survival mechanics, no one's getting eight encounters a day, no one wants to play levels one or two, then if I'm making the next edition, why the heck would I waste my time writing that stuff? I'd rather focus in on what the players want. So how much do we remove from the game to make the game fun? It seems like actually a decent amount, honestly. Like, yeah, you can sit there and list out all the, you know, 500 different rules and be like, oh, well, you only removed a few. Well, yeah, the survival, I think you can go, you know, wherever about. But definitely the class design is tied to those encounters per day. And also very importantly is when people are new to the hobby, if you showed them a character sheet that had 15 different abilities on it, then they may get scared off. And I think level one right there is a really good buffer for getting people into the game. Even at level one, honestly, there is a decent amount of features. And depending on if you're a spellcaster or not, you've got a lot of spells on there that might be still too intimidating for first time players of the game. So I think it's good to be there. But at the same time, you don't want to have the game be situated only for newcomers. You definitely want the game to also facilitate people that are longtime players. So I think the game system is air cool fine as it is, but obviously there's a clamor for people wanting to shave away at the rules. And I'm curious about what sorts of other rules we need to fill in the place because if we don't want survival anymore, what else do we want? If we don't want six to eight encounters in a day, how many encounters do we actually want? If we want to start off with more abilities and more features and that allows your subclass to shine right there at level one, then, you know, how do we create the classes in the first place? It is so important to understanding how this game works, how much we remove from it to get the game that we want. And I think it's important that we discuss this openly because unless we discuss it openly, the people that make these games whether that be Dungeons & Dragons 6th edition or whatever sort of new game systems coming out, they're not going to make the game that the players want. But hey, I'm actually genuinely curious to hear your thoughts on this. What do you remove the game to make the game better in your eyes? What do you add to the game to make the game better in your eyes? How do your players approach this game that has all these rules and they want to shave off all these features that they don't care about? I want to know these things because that'll be very important for when I go to make my own game systems. That'll be important for all the other big wigs when they go to make their own game systems, right? I want to hear these things because we want to make the best game possible for the players and it's no, there's absolutely no point in making systems that no one wants to interact with, right? So go ahead, tell me those things because I would love to hear it. And I, I hope that you all look at each other and be like, oh, you know, that's interesting. My players think differently from your players or oh hey my players are exactly like your players i want to see that stuff so go ahead comment all about it down below but thank you so much for watching thank you for listening thank you to my wonderful patrons thank you all for the subscribes for the likes for the comments for all that stuff that all supports me and goes a long way thank you so very much and i cannot wait to see you all in the next one you know on the topic of how many encounters you get into a day I think that really ultimately comes down to how often you implement short rest and long rest. I think rules as written, they just kind of get in the way of each other. They kind of step on each other's toes and 
ruin the feel of the game, but I'm going to be talking about how we can change up rest in another video.